Hi guys, today I'm here to help you understand a little bit more about how you do research for academic purposes, specifically using online databases. So before we begin, um, I just want to clarify the difference between internet searching and using online databases. They're both from your computer, but they're different. So if you're searching using Google, you're just searching the internet. That's open and available to pretty much everybody, at least in the United States of America. Um, but if you're using an online database, that is closed. It is subscription-based. And so it has information on it that's not necessarily available just on the web. To access the online databases, you go to the ACC homepage. Databases are subscription-based not free. That means that the school pays a fee for its students and faculty to be able to use this resource. So that's why we enter it through the ACC portal. From there you click on students, scroll down to the library under popular resources, and you're going to be using the databases. So here you can see there's an A to Z list of databases. For this particular assignment, we're going to begin using a database called Opposing Viewpoints in Context, which I'll show you. So you can click on the O, and then here you'll see it's the second one on the list, Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. So the purpose of this assignment is for you to identify a controversial issue, articulate two opposing sides to that issue, and then take your own stance and draw a conclusion. Um, and so it's that's a lot to that's a lot to accomplish, um, and th but this particular database is set up in such a way to make that a little bit easier for you. So you might just first start thinking like, what in the heck am I interested in learning about? Because that's what research is, learning about something that you are interested in. So you start using the Supposing Viewpoints in Context database by going to Browse Issues. Click on that Browse Issues and you'll see hundreds of different controversial issues listed here. Many, many, many issues. So from here, you read some, read some of these issues and see what you might be interested in um, in finding out more about. Plenty of stuff to think about. Let's say we're interested in freedom of speech. So the first thing you'll see is uh, an abstract, sort of an overview talking about basically what is this topic about. Some of these things will be obvious and will not. You would not want to cite the overview. The overview is super general, super broad, a lot of common knowledge, not anything that you would actually cite, but it's just hel helping you to kind of understand um, what this issue is about. Below that, you'll find different kinds of sources related to your um, topic. So viewpoint articles would be like the op-ed pieces that we've been using. Academic journals, you're required to use some of those for this assignment, so those are there for you. Biography, audios, websites, um, infographic news, primary sources, those kinds of things. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that you start with the viewpoints because the first thing you have to do once you have picked out a topic is figure out what are the opposing viewpoints. Most things aren't as simple as I'm for it or against it. Um, it's usually more nuanced than that. So freedom of speech, for example, who's going to be against freedom of speech? What does that even mean? What does that look like? And you wouldn't want to you know, try to pigeonhole things into something that obvious. But if you scroll down to the viewpoint articles, there are 409 of them. And this is where you start narrowing your topic a little bit. And these viewpoint articles offer controversial takes on freedom of speech, narrows it down a little bit. So they might tell about situations um, or sort of areas of our society that, uh, that this appears in and where we might actually have a controversy about it. So what you're going to do for the next step after you pick your topic, you scroll through these, you read a few, you use the titles to see if you might be interested in reading those. And then you're going to articulate two opposing sides related to this issue. Okay, again, it shouldn't be as simple as I'm for or against freedom of speech, but perhaps it's something about for or against freedom of speech on Facebook or on social media or as an athlete. So there are lots of different ways that you can approach that. And this particular database does a great job of providing a whole bunch of different angles on that subject. After you have completed that and you'll post your initial thoughts of what you might wanna do on, your, on the discussion board in Schoology, but then you're gonna to have to actually dig in and do some more hard research. 
So when you're doing research, you're not looking for something to support your opinion. You're not looking for factoids. You're not looking for quotes. You are seeking to better understand the issue and better understand the controversy. In pretty much every case that you're going to come across, they're educated, competent, good-hearted people on both sides of these issues. And so it is your what you're trying to figure out is like what's what's happening on each side. What are the schools of thought that would we cause somebody to think about it this way or cause somebody to think about it that way? So you're trying to educate yourself overall about what is going on with this topic. And that's where you're gonna to start to use these academic journals. So if I click on academic journals, there are 185 journal articles. Okay, and these are written by experts, written by scholars, written by doctors, written by people who are professionals in whatever field you're studying. Um, they're written for professionals in the field. And so they're more difficult to read than say your popular sources. They're more detailed, they have more specific information. Sometimes they write about how they collected their data. And so these take a little bit of time. So you go through the same process you went through in looking at the viewpoint articles. You will use, start by looking at the titles to see if these are interesting to you, what kinds of um, information might be available. So Pluralism 101, universities need free speech and free thinkers to fulfill their very mission. That looks interesting, let's click on that. Once I click on it, in opposing viewpoints and context, you can see um, that this offers you the option to listen to it. But there's something else that I want to show you, and it's really helpful. And I call this the magic citation button. It's not actually magic, but it seems magical. If you had to go through the tedious process of building an MLA Works Cited entry, you know how magical this is. At the top, there are little quotation marks and it says cite, click on that, boom, MLA citation done for you. All you have to do is copy that and paste it into your notes so that you have it later. And as you know, that is magical. Okay, so I'm gonna go back a step. There's something that I would definitely encourage you to do when you are um, filtering this, you would wanna filter it by peer reviewed journals. Um, because peer reviewed is a higher standard than just any other kind of journal. Peer reviewed means that multiple professionals in the field have read this and vetted it and agree that it is worth consideration. So you're gonna have peer reviewed journals limited. Now let's say you've identified two opposing viewpoints and you're not finding anything really interesting in this particular database. I'm gonna show you one more database that you might use once you get to this phase of your research. So I'm gonna go back to the ACC homepage, click on students, and we're gonna go again to the library. The A to Z list of databases. And the very first one here is called Academic Search Complete. This is a great database because as the name implies, it's pretty complete. It draws from several different databases. So it's gonna give you more um, opportunity to do specialized searches if there's something in particular you're looking for that opposing viewpoints and context doesn't have for your scholarly journals. Before you start searching, you're gonna make sure that you limit your results to scholarly peer reviewed journals. At this point in your research, you're not interested in viewpoint articles or popular sources. You need to find some scholarly journal articles. So let's say I wanted to look at freedom of speech. Now you should be remembering the tutorial you went through about searching and adjusting your search terms to broaden, broaden or narrow them. I'm getting uh, 11,414 hits. That's a lot. I'm going to limit it to social media. And that brings it down to 189. So that changing those search terms dramatically changes the results. You'll go through the same process you went through when looking for your viewpoint articles. Look at the um, look at the title, see what looks interesting. To hell in a handbasket, teachers, free speech and matters of public concern in the social media world, that looks interesting. What I would do at that point is click on the title. Again, it will offer an abstract. An abstract is an overview of what this article is about. It gives you a very basic sense of what it's about. You would never cite an abstract, it's too broad but you would use it to determine if this article is the kind of thing you're looking for. Let's say it is, you read this and you're like, okay, interesting. I then click on the PDF full text in the upper right-hand corner. And from here, I can see the entire article. You can download it, you can add it to your drive, you can do any number of things with it at this point, you can print it out. 
if you're one of those people that likes to print things, this happens to be a 21 page article and that's not atypical. Um, a lot of these articles will be longer, but a lot of these articles, you don't need to read every little word of it and understand every little word. For example, it might or might not be that relevant to understand um, how they collected their data or things like that. Um, so you kind of have to read with a discerning eye. This particular database also has a magic citation button. It looks a little different. Over on the right-hand corner, you'll see a, what looks like a piece of paper and it says cite if you hover your cursor over it. Click on cite. And for this one, you have to scroll down to find MLA. But again, it has created the citation for you, which is magical. All right, so that's the basic process of how you go through to find your sources. Um, but remember, it's really important to remember that this process is time consuming, especially if you're trying to do it in a meaningful way. If you try to sit down and do it at the last minute and just find whatever is there, you're going to find you're going to find it to be very frustrating. But ideally, what you're doing is you're educating yourself on this topic. Whatever you think about it now, you'll think more deeply about it and know more about it after you're finished with this process. So that can only happen if you go into it with an open mind of like what you're looking for. And instead of looking for a little factoid, you're looking for um, things that are interesting about the topic. Okay, so make sure you leave yourself plenty of time and I'll always ask the professor if you need help or direction because we are here for you and try not to let this get out from under you. Stay on track with your uh, deadlines and this will be um, um, hopefully a good meaningful process for you. So right on.